Thank you very much. Fantastic. Um, it's great to hear how the policy recommendations about which we've been talking just before your arrival have found a way already into political praxis. Not only in the communication, but for instance, the capacity building that you've been mentioning is a, is a very central aspect that we've dis been discussing this morning, so that's fantastic to hear. I'm taking up two buzzwords from your, from your speech, uh, connection and leaving no one behind. Those were two words we've been discussing all together in the last days when we discussed care. Connections were really important for us amongst ourselves as a sector to empower each other and to form our op opinions and our needs and what we can contribute, but also the notion that we, have to, that we cannot leave anyone behind and that we need to be very careful how we talk about the issues that are important for us in order to be recognizable for everyone that we are working for. So in a way, care um, has been a political factor for us. And <clears throat> looking at that, maybe at the moment in time in the political agenda that we are, we are one year before the European election. We are one year since uh, the Conference on the Future of Europe has given the citizens a possibility to, di to discuss bottom up where they see the future of Europe. And Culture Action Europe has um, run a project, Amplify, uh, to inform the conference. We've worked in 12 countries with artists and citizens to ask their opinion and have submitted a report. And where, but that's, uh, I mean, I have to mention it a little bit, disillusioned that culture was uh, so little mentioned in the report. But there is this concern uh, about the future of Europe and citizens and the elections coming up. And we've been talking about the role that culture can play for mental health and many other sectors, but beyond instrumentalizing culture, which we find important but also dangerous, beyond that instrumentalization, can I ask you how you see culture shaping the future of Europe as a, as a political vision? You've been talking about values, the image of Europe. How, how do you see our role in that? Yes, uh, let, let me share two personal <laughs> stories and then I will come to the reply. Uh, when uh, Ursula von der Leyen uh, called me to give me my portfolio responsibilities, four years ago, she told me, I have an idea for you. I want you to be the most anthropocentric member of my team. I don't want you to do tariffs, money, containers, services. I want you to bring together everything that is people-centric. And she said, I need this because this is something that Europeans do not get from Brussels. And she was right. She was right. And uh, she was so right, right say, she was more right than many of the people who attacked her at the time for calling this portfolio the European way of life. Because they thought it would be aggressive, binary, Trumpian, Everything that happened since was a huge vindication of the need to have anthropocentric policies together in Europe. That's the first personal story. The second personal story <laughs> is that on Wednesday, the College of Commissioners, normally we do not say publicly what we discuss, but I will make an exception. Uh, when we were discussing mental health communication, it was surprising to see that practically every commissioner took the floor. Everyone had something to offer, to share, which is yet another proof that this is an, an issue which is not scientific, it's not sectoral, it's, it's part of what we face. So the question now is how do we uh, shape all this into something that Europeans can perceive and when in a year from now, exactly on the day, because the elections are on the 9th of June next year, so we are celebrating, the, we're having this discussion precisely a year to the date before the election. How, how this will motivate Europeans to go and vote? Well, I think that we are doing this already with 
many meetings like that one, but as I was saying earlier, the soil is fertilized enough. We have unprecedented resources for anthropocentric policies. Never before in the history of the European Union we had so much money for health, skills, uh, culture, abilities. This, this is happening as we speak. And why all this is European? I insist that this is part of the European way of life. It is not known, but it's true. Seven out of 10 dollars, well, forget dollars, seven out of 10 euros spent on social policies worldwide are spent in the European Union. It is amazing, amazing that we are the world champions of social policies of care. So this is happening. But we need to find ways of letting Europeans know that it's happening. And this would require lots of activities like yours, lots of discussions, lots of public debates, and not in Brussels. I told you in February, we should de -Brusselize the debate about the European Union. Take Europe out of Brussels. Bring it to Elefsina, to small villages, town hall meetings. This is where public opinion, this is where public opinion is shaped. I'm, I'm all with you. Let's leave Brussels. LFC um, <laughs> is a super... Well, actually, we left proposal. Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to follow up maybe on the, on the mainstreaming question. Um, I mean, we've got the positive example of culture and health now. How do you see similar mainstreaming efforts like the comprehensive approach now taking place with other policy areas? And maybe you have examples also for that. Look, I would uh, respectfully suggest that you take a close look to the communication. I, I know that you've been discussing it, but it's a very fresh uh, document. It's uh, two days old. But please take some time to go through it and see uh, the 20 flagship actions we identify. I insisted very much uh, during the preparation stage that I do not need Parole, parole, parole. I, I don't need diagnostics. I know all this. We all know. So we need to concentrate on what to do about the problem. And you will see that these flagship initiatives are all cross-cutting. They are not from the health area. They are beyond the clinical world. They had to do with stressors, with conditions of access, of inclusion of opportunities, of skills, mobility, training of professionals. There, there is so much that culture can offer, creativity. Uh, so I, the, the, it's not enough to proclaim the cross-cutting element of our mental health uh, prescription. It's to make it happen. Thanks very much. I, I know that uh, there's at least one board member who has a burning question on her mind. Celia Grau, please. Thank you. Kalimera, Mr. Skinas. Um, on the topic of health, you mentioned some time ago in the parliament uh, that you have to respond to um, citizens' expectations beyond EU competence. Um, now, as you mentioned before, uh, the um, comprehensive approach to mental health uh, is actually addressing uh, concrete needs that came out from the um, Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, we know that EU cannot uh, do everything and needs to work hand in hand with member states, but um, you as the Commission's Vice President, um, how could you better support the cultural and creative sectors in fulfilling their role? Thank you. I come from a small rural community in northern Greece, uh, Halkidiki. Each time that I go there, it's a small village of 500 people. They know me, I know them, and they ask me when it comes to health. What is Europe doing about this? What is Europe doing about that? And as you can imagine, I cannot tell these people, well, you know, this is an issue of EU competence, and article this, and article that. They, they don't care. 
They say, you are our guy in Europe. What, what are you guys doing? Sort it out. So on health, this is part of the legacy of this commission. We produced a European miracle because we exhausted every inch of current competence, traité constant, as they say in French, to make sure that we have vaccines for everybody, that we have new organizations like HERA that will prepare before the health threats hit us, that we are revising the existing agencies, ECDC and EMA, that we have a proposal on European data health space, that we have revised the pharmaceutical legislation, we have built the biggest and most ambitious EU action plan against cancer, now mental health. So I want to elevate our work above the trivial look and Brussels talk on competence. Because the best way of not doing anything is to say that you are not competent. So, mutatis mutandis, the same applies for health and education. There is so much that we can do as Europeans to fertilize these policies without replacing member states' responsibility on providing schools or cultural and academic institutions. That's not for Brussels. That's for, for national and regional authorities. But building skills in this area, that's Brussels. Paying for mobility, it's Brussels. Well, look what we're doing today. Um, providing support for professionals, Brussels. So this is the areas that we need to work at the European level. Put aside the issue of competence and make sure that all this is like a, a galaxy where all planets have their place, but the overall alignment is right. And in this galaxy, I see health, I see culture, I see mobility and skills in a perfect alignment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I have maybe one last question. Uh, I've already touched upon it um, a few minutes ago that it's quite unique and for us really important that the current Commissioner for Culture has also research and innovation in its portfolio. It, it somehow recognizes our notion of knowledge production that is often practice-based, based on um, uh, participatory practices, relationships, um, creative practices, and it puts us on a level playing field, so to speak, with other disciplines. It's a really important um, driver for us to, to develop ourselves. Um, how do you see that combination being sustained in the future? Can you look into the future? How could, should that portfolio look like? What's your own perspective on that? Now, at the moment, it's pulled, teared apart, but that's hopefully momentarily. I'm, I'm laughing because, as you would guess, I'm, I'm struggling to de -brasselize. And Lars is doing the opposite, pushing me to keep Brusselizing. <laughs> this is a very Brusselite. Stay there. <laughs> okay, <I've laughs> okay, since we are on, on family here, let's... I mean, there is a clear logic. What uh, the president of this commission did is to bring culture, education, sport, and innovation together. It is a clear uh, hook uh, to all this. What is a bit strange is that Maria Gabriel, who was given her portfolio, was reporting for the innovation side to Margrethe and for the rest to me. So she was like a colossus of roads stranding between uh, two parts. Now that she left, uh, the split is absolute. Uh, as you said, uh, Margrethe gets innovation, I get the rest. In the next commission, I think this is something that should stay. If it were up to me, I would definitely keep this mega uh, portfolio. But probably, probably, I wouldn't split the, the reporting line. I would think that uh, it would be nice to have all this under one uh, vice presidency. And I think, frankly, it's better to have it under the European way of life presidency <laughs> than the competitiveness. Uh, vice presidency because, okay, culture will never be 
a strict to sensu competitiveness industry. You know, it's something else. It has an impact on competitiveness, but it's not about competitiveness. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, Keep up the good work. I, I, I would like to... I, I would like to thank you not only for your contribution, but for your uh, repeated contribution. So this starts to feel like an ongoing conversation. And I hope and I'm confident that we can keep up that conversation in the future. It is very important for us, and I feel it is equally important for you to know and understand our needs and our perspectives and how we frame the discussion. And we see that it informs your policies. And it is nice that we can react on them and, and feed back how it can be even better. So that conversation is really important for us. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see you back at another occasion in a half year if we follow up the rhythm. Um, and I'll just take up as a final word um, a word that you've been using, a seed. Uh, so I think you've indeed been planting a seed, but we are also planting seeds. And the... Uh, image that we've been using in our strategy conversation a few days ago when we look at Culture Action Europe as an ecosystem in which we want to um, uh, nourish a permaculture of really relating to one another, that seed image is really important and let's nourish that seed together and water it together and care for it. And with that, I thank you once more for thank your time, you. Margarita. There is...